Good morning, good evening, and a good unspecified hour of the day to you and your kin. Welcome back to the podcast nobody asked for, yet it exists all the same, the Locationally Challenged Podcast. We call it that because each episode is filmed in a different location. Today's episode is pulsating from our local Denny's. Side note, I love when companies add a quirky little subtitle to their name. Denny's is America's Diner. Funny how they think we need one to begin with. My name is Jacob Vanderweide, and it is my job to make you laugh today. Although I probably won't do a very good job of that. Before I introduce my co-hosts, who may or may not make you laugh, please remember that this podcast is utterly unwavering in its commitment to comedy over factualities. Now, let's dive in, just like you can dive into the Denny's toilet. Joining me at the most forgettable chain, chain restaurant in the United States are the freshman, J Doggy Dog Jalen, the actress from the Aaron and Abby Dates, Abby, the actor from the Aaron and Abby Dates, Aaron, the Knox from the Aaron and Abby Dates, Knox, the History Museum curator, Lillian Ham, WWE superstar, Grant, South Carolina's own, Jack, and the existentialist, Sammy. Also accompanying me on the show is the only co-host to have been present for every podcast so far, that being the forever beardless Tyler Harity, or should I say Tyler Disparity. Now that I have introduced my underlings, I would like to open our show as per the huge with a brief monologue. Honey. Baby. Mama. Sugar. These are some of the many names you will be called the moment you walk into a Denny's. If you don't believe me, go find out for yourself. Currently operating 1,700 stores worldwide, you surely aren't far from the uncalled for nickname of your nightmares. Once you've entered your local Denny's, you'll notice all but two tables in the store are empty. There's a mop, a mop bucket under a leak in the ceiling. The men's bathroom door has been mysteriously propped open and the stuffed animals in the claw machine are staring deep into your crusty heart. You are greeted tenderly by the waitress rolling her eyes at your party of eight and taking her sweet time to get to you. Once you're seated, you'll notice that the entire staff is suspiciously busy and lazy. The food you order won't be available, so you'll go with your third choice on the menu. After an excruciating 45 minute wait, your food will arrive, cold, and yet, Despite the miserable experience, you'll look back fondly and return a few years later with for the exact same experience. This, my friends, is the Denny's Saga. I am now delighted to welcome my co-hosts to answer some of my lingering questions about Denny's. As our only returning star, Tyler, we'll start with you. When my mom has a bad day, she makes the family breakfast for dinner. What kind of day would cause you to decide to eat at Denny's? Yasmin Sahid is definitely the main character, no matter where she goes, even when it's back in time. Um, and a, something is a magician in the kitchen who loves to cook for everybody, and now they've come together to unite everyone with this new, yes, we pecan salted caramel milkshake. Thank you and have a nice day. So that was Tyler reading from the TikToker influenced menu. I'm depressed. Jalen. If the stuffed animals in the claw machine could talk, what would they be telling us right now? Probably something really sweet, along the lines of eat your heart out. I like that their eyes are plastic, and that they reflect your face back to you. It's very sweet. Abby, when the waitress calls you sugar, how does that make you feel? Um, when the waitress calls me sugar, um, it fills me with an unbearable sense of dread um, because I just don't know what's going to happen next. Right. Aaron, you seem like a cook at a Denny's. Can you tell our listeners your favorite recipe to cook in the Denny's kitchen? Definitely uh, bread that's been sogged in the uh, toilet water in the men's bathroom that was suspiciously uh, propped open, followed by uh, slightly burnt bra- bacon and scrambled eggs, whether you ask for them scrambled or not. Nice. Knox, you're a local to this area. Can you tell our listeners the craziest story you've heard about this Denny's location? Either real or fictional? 
Well, I've heard many stories. I've heard that this could be a potential drug fund, and this is where they launder all the money from Pablo Escobar. Little known fact, Pablo Escobar is the name of Ryan's stuffed animal penguin. Grant, what could Denny's do to be more hip with the youths? Well, obviously, they have an empty wing in Denny's at all times, so they could put a live rock man playing 24-7, so all the youths come by to boogie and woogie. Yes, I, I as a youth have been known in my day to get down with it. Lily, as a historian, excuse me, I was just interrupted with Grant doing the gritty. Back to the show. Lily, as the historian of our show, please enlighten our listeners about the history of Denny's. Um, yes, Denny's was originally opened during the Cold War for a bomb shelter. Uh, yeah, um, can we get some more modern history? Modern history, um... As in, they sell pancakes still to this day, as they did during the Cold War. And they haven't gotten any better. Jack, there's been a lot of buzz in the news about ChatGPT and AI as a whole. How do you think Denny's could use AI to build, boost their sales? They could put ice in the deep fryer, which I recommend everyone do. Classic. Sammy, what does the existence of Denny's say about our culture and where it is headed? You know, I, I just have eaten like three packs of sugar just from the little tray here, and I really have gotten the feeling that Denny's has a lot to say about capitalism. And you know, everybody knows about capitalism. It's, it, it, yeah. It sucks. <laughs> Economics, everyone. Thank you all for answering my lingering questions. I think I speak for all of my co-hosts present when I say, Denny's is the happiest place on Earth. Disney World simply cannot compete. Back to the Jacob Vanderwide YouTube channel, viewers. It's me, Abby, from the Aaron and Abby Date videos. Jacob gave me the opportunity to lead the current events discussion today, so here we go. Let's focus on news from the tech world. Lily, there's been a lot of talk about Chinese spy balloons lately. What kind of technology do you think is inside them? I think an original iPhone. So true, I agree. Jalen. I hear you like cars. Can you give our listeners a sneak, pe a sneak preview of the next Tesla model to be released? They're actually um, going backwards this time. Instead of green, it's going to be red energy um, taken directly from Red Bull, put into your car engine, and actually submit two times the amount of emissions as before. Wow. Perfect for college students. Aaron, you are my heart's desire. I know it's a few weeks late, but would you be my valentine? No. <laughs> wow, I'm heartbroken. <sighs> Knox, what kind of technology will schools be using 10 years from now? Well, I think that the apocalypse is, is among us, and the chances of schools existing in 10 years is highly unlikely. I agree. Sam, have there been any recent advances in video game technology? Uh, yes. 
uh, we have still gotten zero updates on Silk Song, <laughs> but uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out soon, so that's that's pretty cool. I don't know what any of those words mean. <laughs> Tyler, you do understand that your field of study, cybersecurity, will quickly be overtaken by automation, right? Well, here's the thing about automation. You see, AI, it functions based on learning. It's machine learning. And what it does is it takes other segments and introduces that into its own cortex of information. Um, so if I put that with false information, we'll just make another AI. And that way, I'll always have a job because I'll keep ruining the next one. Thank you. And then you can take over the world. Jack, what happened to the old cast members of this podcast? They put ice in the deep fryer. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you all for responding. I apologize for asking you these questions in the first place. On to the next segment. Hi, Miss Thornburg. My name is Knox. I know you haven't met me yet, but Jacob wanted me to say on his behalf, thank you for being such a loyal subscriber. Hold on. Let's broaden this shout out a little bit. Can I get a round of applause for mothers? If you're a mother listening to this podcast, we would like to humbly ask you to subscribe. Your comments are so valuable to us, especially to Jacob. Thank you, Knox. That was beautiful. I really could have said that myself. <laughs> eh, who am I kidding? I outsource all the talking on this podcast. Our second to last segment of the podcast today is one we tried last time with admittedly poor results. So, what did I choose to do? Do it again, of course. Mommy taught me as a young lad, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. This segment is called Sing a Song. I call it that because I force my co-hosts into singing in public. It's funny, I promise. Let's join our harmonious tongues in singing Happy Birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Silent. Happy birthday to you. You may have noticed that my co-hosts got slightly confused when we got to the happy birthday dear insert name here segment of the song they were confused because it isn't anyone's birthday <laughs> on to our final segment of the day the infamous roundtable discussion called that because our party of 10 couldn't fit in a booth as always our roundtable discussion question will be based on our current location which today is Denny's today our question is should Denny's employees be paid above minimum wage? I think they should be paid above minimum wage because they make me feel a certain kind of way when I walk through that door. They say, how you doing, sugar? It really makes me smile. I think Denny's employees should get paid as much as the president because they single-handedly hold our country together. You know, and it's really all about that machine learning aspect that I'm trying to get at here. It's just... <laughs> yeah, you know, if we're talking economics, um, Denny's workers are definitely essential. Um, so I'm thinking they should get paid at least $30 per hour. Um, plus, they should be the DoorDash drivers that bring us the Denny food. I think each Denny employee should get paid commission for each cube of ice they put in the deep fryer. With how much heart and soul Denny's employees put into their food, I truly believe that they should be paid more than minimum wage by at least two pennies. No, I don't know much about wages. I'm not a math guy. But I just want to say this. Tip your waiters. Be kind. Be gracious. They're great. I think Denny's employees should be paid under minimum wage because I have been absolutely flabbergasted at the utter discrepancy. No, des no, that's the wrong word. What's the word I'm looking for? 
I think Denny's employees should be paid extra for each social star's influencer menu item they sell. Listen, okay, I refuse to have my job taken by a oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh. Oh. Kiddos, thank you all so much for your comedic insight. I'm certain at least one of our viewers enjoyed this podcast enough to smile. Maybe. I hope. Well, this is us signing off. Stay curious, and don't forget what we always say. Drinking from the mop bucket will put some hair in your chest. That's all, honeys. We'll remind you of Club Penguin again next time. Goodbye. <laughs>